Welcome to The Fallen State. I'm Jesse Lee Peterson. Today we're talking about the state of black Americans and the black family. I have with me Brother Polite. He's an author of 90 books as well as a motivated speaker and celebrity mentor. He's joined by his two wives, Raet and Amunet. Thank you guys for coming. Thanks. Two Thanks wives, that's amazing. So you have, how many wives do you have? I have four. You have four wives. And um, so you are a polygamist? Yeah. Define that for me. A construct in which there's a male and several female counterparts engaged in a relationship. How many females are allowed to be involved? It's indefinite, but of course, uh, I get the consent from the females. So you say, you wake up one more, you know what, honey, I think I want another one? Uh, oh, no. That wouldn't work. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> How do you get the consent? What, how, how does that happen? Well, there has to be a necessity for another female to be part because we have a, it's economically structured. So when we want to embark upon a new endeavor that can make all of us the benefactors, that'd be the thing that would commence the operation. Give me an example of a situation that requires okay. number two wife. Well, this is the first wife that got involved with this relationship. I've been with Aminette for 19 years. We've been together since 12, 13 years old. That's amazing. And so, Since you've been 12? Yes. Wow. <laughs> as, as we grow and we develop, we be, began to understand more about economics, and we wasn't really left with any inherited wealth. And considering that wealth really begins at $150,000 a year, and the threshold for poverty for a family of four is about $32,000 a year, and for individuals about $15,000 a year, neither her and I combined would get us anywhere near the point of being able to amass real wealth. And so we use the polygynous construct as a catalyst to embark upon those type of endeavors. So we opened up a bookstore, and we needed assistance. And so when I presented the idea to Raet, whom we knew for a period of time because she used to come to the bookstore, uh, we then found out where we can establish some kind of reciprocity or something that could be mutually beneficial for her and for us. Were you surprised when you, here you are in the bookstore and the owner walks over to you and says, hey, I'm looking for a second wife, what do you think? <laughs> Were you surprised? That's exactly how it happened, but yes, yes I was. So it's not something that you're exposed to. Right, that's right. Initially, like we don't learn this in school. Right, and so what was your first impression, your first thought when the you first, asked it? The first thought I actually had was, I was just like, um, does she know? Right. <laughs> that was my first, my first thought, it was right. natural, because That's right. um, when I started coming, I was really young, so I actually looked How old at, were you at the time? Um, I was like 17. Oh, okay. Six, I was 16, 17. My mother used to go to the bookstore, and so I seen them two together, and I was just like, really happy for them. She was um, pregnant, and she looked gorgeous, like she just was just, dark African looking queen <laughs> right. for Afro, you know? And I was just like, wow, you know? So that was the first thought I had. I was just like, does she know, you know? But yeah, that's pretty much the first thought. And then so he says, yes, she knows. And you say, okay, let's talk, the three of you. Or did you just bring her home? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what we did, we all talked. I, of course, got permission from my wife, Aminette, to engage her and present the idea to her. And then we all eventually talked after I spoke to her and we had a meeting. Are you guys like legally married or you just say wife? Oh, well, of course bigamy is against the law, mm -hmm. but I have contracts with each of my wives. With the wife, okay. Were you surprised when your wife said yes to a second wife? Um, no, I wasn't surprised. What I would say is I would be surprised some years prior. Right. Because that definitely wouldn't have been her disposition. So you, you meet her and then what happened in your mind? You're like, this is a good one to be with? Well, actually, yes, because she, like they mentioned, she has been coming around to the bookstore for years before right. we even um, uh, consider her as a co-wife. So uh, it's not like, you know, a random person off the street. Like I've actually seen her, I've seen her family. Right. You know, we're pretty much on the same path. So I said, this would be a good sister. How was uh, Brother Polite able to convince you to do this? <laughs> wow, good choice of words. 
<laughs> well, like for me, I thought more of the future. And as they mentioned, I was conceiving at the time. So I know I didn't have both parents. There are things that I was, uh, I was lacking right. growing up. You, and I wanted more. There. No, oh, okay. I wanted more for my child. Right. So I said, you know what? I can see how I can benefit because I also wanted to educate my child. So I was able to um, homeschool. So my child was able to see both parents and right. she was able to grow into uh, inherited wealth because we already erected our own businesses. So I said, you know, it's different, but I'm willing to give it a try. And he showed me results. Like I've seen results and she was very positive. Right? It was very positive. It was on the same path, like mentally as well. Oh, okay. And we all wanted more for each other. Right. So I said, okay. That's amazing. <laughs> and so were you raised by both parents? Nah, my father walked out at age eight and I met my mother when I turned 17. She died the week I met her. Wow, I'm sorry to From hear that. From cancer you, and diabetes. That's and how about you, were you raised by both parents? No. No? My no father fault. left when I was young. I don't remember what he looks like. Um, but I had a stepfather. Women don't normally like each other. And so how do you ladies deal with each other? Because you know how women are, right? Right, I, yeah. I'm a woman, right? Right. So how do you guys deal with each other when that thing comes up? Okay, well, it's like this. Siblings, <laughs> right? They all don't get along. Like, if it's something personal, like, say, Rae and I, like, I'll go to her, or she'll come to me, and, like, we'll sit down and we'll build. But the main thing, we normally just have everyone out, children included, everyone speak their mm -hmm. mind. This is what's bothering me. Uh, how can we fix the situation? And you feel the same way about it? That's how you work it out? Yeah, pretty much. So we all know like females can be very catty. Yeah. We know that that can come into play or the ego. And so it's really just bearing in mind what we started this for. Right. And also knowing a person, because when you get to know a person, then you understand that they're no longer your enemy. You don't have to actually compete against them, yeah. you know, because you're for them and they're for you. So right. it just makes it easier when things like that come along. And so when he brought in the next two, all three of you got together and discussed it. The same, same process. process. That's how it is. And ultimately, before that even happens, uh, we'll get a feel of the female. Because oh, okay. everyone has, everyone is inherently good and has inherently bad in them too. It's a, it's a choice. Right. So it's, it's really vibing with the female itself because honestly, he may be the center of the relationship. Right. But if the females are not in a cohesive unit, if mm -hmm. they're not communicating and they're not for it, it's not going to work. That's true. It's yeah. really not going to work. Do you have children for him? No, I don't have any children. Uh, how many do you have? I have one. You just have one. So is there only one child? No. There's three children. Oh, so the other two wives have some? Yeah. Right. That's amazing, man, that you got four wives. <laughs> so I'm looking at the video last night. All of you guys are pretty. You choose pretty women, too. I noticed that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Um, <laughs> so I was thinking, I was watching the video, yes. you know, so I can get some idea of what's going mm -hmm. on. How do you have sex with all of them? And how do you <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was going to come up. Yeah. Every, everyone asked. Yes. How do you he had feel to warm it up, you yeah. know, <laughs> loosen it up. Because <laughs> I'm thinking, this is a lot of work, and sex wears you down after a while, this right? This is true. And so how do you have sex with four women? Do you make dates, or how do you well, do it? Are we not too mechanical about it? So every business, is a person that has to be nurtured. And even in monogamous relationships, people make it their business to engage each other instead of create something effectively yeah. in terms of commerce. So with this idle time, so to speak, this devil time, the women have their own perspective businesses. It keeps them pretty much busy, keeps me busy, my own business, and then the business that we create together as two, and then the business we create together as a whole. So you have sex every day or four days uh, a week since so you have four wives? I don't have sex every day. In fact, I think I have less sex than uh, single men and monogamous men. So when you get ready to have sex with the other one, do you confront your wife and let her know, I'm going to have sex with <laughs> Oh no, I, this I one don't do today, that. do you mind? N no. Do all you guys sleep together in the same bed? No, no. we don't. <laughs> oh, so how do, you, how do you decide to have sex without your wife being, having a problem with it? Uh, I don't make the decisions over who has a problem, but if there's any point of contention, it would just have to be addressed amongst the wife that has the issue. 
oh, and I then see. I will have to properly address it. And we both have to be mature about the situation. Yeah. So jealousy is a human emotion. It may happen from time to time, but as long as it doesn't preoccupy our ideas and saturate our thoughts, we, we get through. When you know that he's in there having sex with one of the other wives, what are you thinking? Well, I don't always <laughs> know when he's having sex. Oh, you don't? No, I don't I'm, know when he's having sex with other... Are there like four bedrooms in the house? Yeah, well, we have pretty big homes, but oh, each okay. uh, wife has their own space like I'm well. always, So I'm not going to be always around when he's having sex <laughs> yeah. with one of the other females. We'll oh, try to not. be as conservative but as possible. But if it happens, it's just like, <laughs> okay, well turn up the music or I'm doing something else. It's not, it doesn't honestly bother me. Like it, if most females, it probably would. Yeah, of course. Without a doubt. But it doesn't <laughs> honestly bother me. Like I know in reality, and I don't want to put a negative perspective. Right. So I'm not, you know, dogging on men, but I know uh -oh. that there are previous, <laughs> no, no. I know that, <laughs> <laughs> that there are certain relationships or men that will do it without the female's knowledge right you know yes and a lot of times it happens should that be a reason why a female should be polygamous no it's not a reason it's not a you know a reason why you should get into it but i'm it happens and so when you're sitting there doing it you just wash dishes <laughs> 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 like I said, we, we work to be uh, conservative and respectful and consider other people's emotions. But it, it's a human process. Consistency does a lot for a relationship. Like, we really know each other at a certain point. Do you so love these ladies? There's trust there. I definitely do. You love all of them? I definitely do. Do you love them in the same manner, equally? That's always an interesting question because as a parent, if I were to ask another parent, do you love that son more than the other son, people would say, don't do that, that's wrong. <laughs> But with the wives, they always want yeah, to know, do you question. love one wife more <laughs> than the other? But everyone is different, so each... Uh, I can never love each wife the same way, but I love them all. Who do you love the most? I have no idea. <laughs> I, I love things about each woman that the other woman may not necessarily have in our chemistry. Who is the, which one is the meanest? Number one, two, three, or four? Um, <laughs> I got a feeling number two. I'm, obviously, I was just smacked, so. Uh, <laughs> no, that, uh, I'm not the meanest. Not, <laughs> no. You look like, I have a sister who looks like you, and she's so mean. It's, it's pheno, the phenotype will let you know. It's two to one right no. now. Yeah. I didn't even answer, but it, you can see. You looked over here. I, I just wanted to see your face. <laughs> it's showing, it's revealing itself. Which one you say is the meanest of the wives? Huh? See, she looked at you too. <laughs> <laughs> you know, once you know how a person is, yeah. then you can, you just let them be, you know, because. She's annoying. <laughs> <laughs> I can be very annoying. Thank you. <laughs> we yeah. all have our <laughs> days, yeah. but. Are you allowed to have another boyfriend or husband if you wanted to? Uh, just, I don't want one. But uh, in the polygynous relationship, that's not how it's constructed. Oh, it's not? No. So if they say, you know what? I need a second man here. <laughs> what would you say? Uh, I would give my support, but it would be outside the auspice of this particular relationship. Meaning that you would break up with him? It would be now polyandrous. Meaning if, if you, they if did you that. wanted another man, we wouldn't be here. Oh, yeah. I see. Because this is a polygynous relationship. So just like there's a monogamous relationship, I wouldn't go to a man and a woman and say, can your boyfriend get another girlfriend? They'll look at me and say, this is a monogamous relationship. This is the rules of engagement for this particular relationship. This is how we both feel about oh, the I world. Oh, I see what you're saying. That's amazing, man. So let me ask, like for you, does it, it help your ego to have these many beautiful women in one household? Naturally, it does. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the man. <laughs> I wake up saying it many times. I bet. And now, a word from our sponsor. I am so excited. I can't believe it. Finally, the Fall Estate merchandise is here. Look at this beautiful shirt. We have red, white, and black. Comfortable, I like to fit. Really nice t-shirts. And we have mugs. The Fall Estate mug. On the back it says, did you have fun? <laughs> did you have fun? A gift. Excellent gifts, both. This is a great way for you to help us. Can you imagine your friends seeing you with this at the office, at the park, in your home? You're going to love it. Order them now. Go to thefallenstate.tv. Thank you so much. I appreciate it.
What type of man is, is he? He's a phenomenal man. Uh, amazing. What type of man is he? How would you describe him? He's the type of man that he puts his mind to something and he makes it manifest. Mm -hmm. And he's the type of person that makes you believe in him. You see his potential and it helps you to find the potential in yourself. Um, is he the head of you? The head of me? Uh -huh. <laughs> what do you mean? If you, can you, know, just you know how, <laughs> you know how the Andy, you know, the there's a spiritual of, order to life given right. to us and ordained by God. And that order is God in Christ, Christ in man, man that's over right. woman that's and right. woman over the children. <laughs> is he the head of you? He, I, I hold him in very, very high esteem. So he, he has one of those places up there for me. Is he the head? of you? Not the complete head. He's a half a head. So, <laughs> I'm sure that's the word you're using. <laughs> <laughs> <That's> <laughs> okay, so I would say, like I said, I, I hold him up in high esteem. He is my deity. Um, do I believe in there just being one God or the so-called God that is a part of Christianity? No. And so it's is that a yes or no that he's your head? I would just say yes. You would say Make yes? It simple. I'm sorry? Yes. Okay, how about you? Is he the head of you? Of me. Are you the head of me? No. <laughs> I'm not getting involved with that. I'm not even touching that. <laughs> this, this is tough because he's up there. He has that slot for me. But I also play a role in my life. So... I don't know. It's it's half and half. It has to be half and half. He's you half have to have word both is principles. Ambiguous. You have to have the masculine and the feminine principles to, to put together, and then okay, we're one. Right. So is that a yes or no? <laughs> <laughs> I have to say no. He's not your head. No. <laughs> Are you the head of your wives? Uh, I see them as my partners. Not head. No. Don't say no. partner. I Why see not? them as my partner. What's wrong with partner? Because that's a homosexual word. Oh, okay. You know how Etymology. They want us to oh. All that mess they're doing. I it's dig okay. it. And so oh. they created that word partner, right? Yeah. It's like the husband Those and wife. Those political associations yeah. and stuff. So yeah. don't okay. say partner. Okay. okay. Well, we are 18. Right. So you're not the head? <laughs> I don't see myself as the head. Why not? Because they empowered me with the ability to do what I do. While it's at the same rate, in a leadership position, yeah, I am in one, in mm -hmm. the household, and right. true leaders are slaves to the people that they are performing for. Mm -hmm. So in that regard, I just don't want the connotation of the word head. So you're not the head of them, and they are not the head of you? Yeah, I, that's, I, I, would like to, you? I would like to see it that way. Uh, there's days where they are the head of me, and there's days where I'll be the head of them. It depends mm -hmm. on whose role is more in demand at that particular time. So well, we can alternate in leadership position. You know how black women can be, their mind can change. Just Undoubtedly. Like that. That's so what? just women. What do you mean <laughs> black women? <I> know. <laughs> oh, how many more are you gonna add? If it were up to me. How many more wives are you gonna add? If it were up to me, yeah. and the circumstances permitted, and things were right, uh, I wouldn't be able to put a number on it per se. I feel, I feel, I feel the heat. They like you better answer this question right. So I'm doing my best to answer it right. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I never really have a number on it. This situation probably would have been destroyed by now. Right. From being overzealous, it's about the comfortability of the women I'm with, especially at this level. Right. Because children are involved. So right. the worst right. thing you want to happen is for me to bring in a woman throws off the chemistry of the family. I'm left with one woman and my children are bastardized. Yeah. We're That's not right. really looking to do that. We mm -hmm. want to actually revoke that process exactly. of us being in broken family households right. and giving them as much as support as possible. So that's one of the main tenets of this polygynous situation to be able to homeschool our children mm -hmm. and that's also amazing. be economically sound so we can have the freedom to travel, read, study, oh, pray, yeah. meditate. And their How children. many more is he allowed to have? I don't have a number. You don't have a number? No. That's amazing. How, how many more, Miss Mean Lady, how many more are you allowed to have? I can hear you, you're not going to get another one. Uh, no. <laughs> um, 
it's like like he said it depends on the comfortability if the time is right if the if everything's right and it happens then so be it oh, yeah okay. but i don't have an exact number and uh, it's like it's when I'm the purpose like why is she right. coming in, in the first place right. it's not like hey he's religious i'm in you know it's not like that oh, i see right so uh, do you date white women and Hispanics and others too? Puerto Rican, there are a lot of Puerto Ricans in New York. Uh, do you date other races of women as well? I don't date non-blacks. You don't I, date non-black women? Yeah. And really? I, I don't really, <laughs> I really don't date. But I have a preference in black women and I want to re-invite our community back into our DNA since we've been robbed and stripped of our DNA for so many years. And who robbed you of it, your DNA? Of the very non-blacks that we're discussing. Maybe not all of them, maybe not their progeny today, but I would like us to tie back into our own vine and be able to assert who we are just by looking at our nose or our knees or our cheekbones and be able to say, man, that's that tribe. Mm -hmm. I feel like we've been raped for so many years that we are confusing that loss for identity of who we are. Mm -hmm. And in turn, that is causing a great deal of chaos and confusion in our community. So you don't believe the races should mix like that? Uh, I don't believe I should mix, but I believe people should have the right to their sexual and personal preference in each other. But with all being equal, would, would you suggest that the races not mix? I don't believe we're all equal, but I believe people have the right to their own preferences. Me personally, because of my historical conceptions, right. I feel that it's incumbent that I make sure that even if my emotions made me inclined to deal with a non-black, I feel I have a responsibility to confide in a black woman to produce children. Have you ever dated outside your race? No. How about you? No, I haven't. Would you? I can't Let's say. Let's say you broke up with For your, the future. So there is a possibility. I find beauty in all races. Oh, okay. How about, is there a possibility? No. Let's say God forbid you and your <coughs> husband break up. No, I love black men. You I love black men. Them. What do you love about black men? everything their mind the divineness i appreciate them for who they are but they're so weak no they're not <laughs> not my black men <laughs> no, how not. can you say that you as a black black man. man you have to believe in them i used to be they're, weak they're too powerful. Though. <laughs> you used to be yeah, so weak. you're not now not now but i was what made you weak? he woke up um <laughs> what made me weak is i had a lot of anger mm. like you guys my father wasn't there so i had this yearning for my father Mm. And then my mother had imposed her will upon me. Mm. You know, our mothers are impatient. Mm. And so they cause you to become angry. No. And so in that anger, <laughs> I was weak. And so once I forgave them, then I bec I'm becoming strong. Wow. Okay. Wow. And so most black men are weak because their mothers have destroyed their natural nature. And you become like what you hate. So they have taken on the mother's identity mm. instead of the father. Interesting. That makes sense? I agree a great deal. Yeah. With I understand. And so that's why I say most of them are weak because the mothers have destroyed them. They need them. the love. They're lacking right. love. Right, that's right. Love they need the love of a father. That's right. I agree. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Oh, let me ask this. Are you guys, you guys are not Christians, right? No, we're not. What religion are you? We have none in particular, but we make subscriptions to comedic science, the ancient Egyptian uh, conception of the universe. So when you pray, who do you pray to? Do you pray? I, I pray to my wife. You pray to your wife? And I pray towards every brother and sister that has died in the name of us or lived in the name of our people. How do you, give me an example if you can, how do you pray to your wife? Well, it's a form of adoration. It's my worship for her. And to worship somebody is to hold them in high admiration, highly revere them, give them a great deal of respect, give them a great deal of honor. Is she standing there listening to this? Or do you do it in private? <laughs> well, it's some, I, I believe love should be a verb, so it's better demonstrated then professed. Oh, so see. through my actions and my oh, deeds, it can show clearly how I feel about her. And so at the time that he's worshiping you, are you aware that he's worshiping you? <laughs> <laughs> Not all the time, no. But sometimes? But I do know that he has a, a lot of love and respect for me. When he is worshiping you, what does that feel like? Ah. Oh. Heaven. <laughs> <laughs> like, I am being worshipped. That's right. I, I believe every you man should, should worship their female counterpart. Do you worship all of your well, wife? I worship them all. I worship the black woman in general. Oh. I worship women and respect them all, all over the world. Be they black or non-black, I, I feel they play an integral role 
in humanity and them being undermined is part of the reason why society is so crazed today. What does it feel like when he's worshiping you? I feel loved. You feel loved? And are there times when you feel as though he's not worshiping you? No. And you're like, you better come here and worship me. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I need some physical worship, then that's something different. So do, are there times when you feel like you need to be worshiped by no. him? No. I always feel loved by him. Oh, okay. And the same with you? Do you ever feel like he needs to worship me? It's no, been a he while. does. He does a lot. What do you, what do you, what happens when you feel like, you know what, this when man I feel doesn't like that, love me? No, no, no. I go within myself because I know how much he does love Oh, I see. And care oh, that's cool. Me. Yeah. So when you feel unloved, you go within yourself? I need to, first I go within to figure out what's going on with myself. Right. And then I can come outside and see what's going on. Do you believe racism exists? Yes. And is there any proof that racism exists? Is there any proof? You're serious? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, unfortunately, yes. And give me proof that racism exists. Okay, uh, let's do the media, right? The image that they portray. Uh, now they're starting to lean more towards the natural look and things like that. But before they were, it was really strong in, on enforcing uh, you know, the straight, blonde hair, uh, small physique, but now they're try it's changing. But is that a, uh, an example of racism? Well, the people who are in control of the media. But anyone who controls their own media is going to put out there the image they want there. Like, I, when I look at black media, BET and others, they're showing black people. Is that racism? No. And so why is it racism when the white media does it? No, well, I see what you're saying. Yeah. I understand what you're saying. You just got me right there. But um, what I'm saying is this. Uh, BET, they do both. They do both. I know, but predominantly. But and it's just who, lately who, who started runs, showing who fat runs, women on BET. Lately, they're right. starting to change it. But before, it wasn't always like that. Right. So when BET yeah. was doing Asking the question you was just asking. You were okay. saying who runs. Yeah, who who runs the media? Who's in control of it? BET is not owned by a black person. Not anymore, but at not one anymore. point it was. Yeah, and it wasn't always it wasn't always uh, Nubian faces only. So when the black guy ran it, and he ran majority black people showing black images, was he being racist? No. So so likewise, the white media is not racist because we tend to promote whatever we have control over. And that's another reason why I'm in this relationship, so my daughter can see and appreciate herself for who she is, and she can see other sisters that look like her oh, and the see. same images and things like that. Because when we go outside or we put on a TV, a lot of times you see other races. You don't really see yourself. So that self-hate, it's, in, it's in with, within you. But does that self-hate come from white people, or do, does it come as a result of the failing of the parents? It's a combination. It's not just strictly white people. That would be insane to right. say that. So no. it's it's because I noticed that black men and women who are raised by two good parents, a mm -hmm. father and a mother, they uh -huh. don't have those issues. But those who don't uh -huh. have those issues. So is it yeah. due to the failing of the it's, parents or white people? No, I think it's media. I think they both play a role. The, it's like, because with the parents, they should be controlling or play a major role in what the child is seeing right, as the well. Right, parenting, yeah. Yeah. You believe racism exists? Oh, of course it does. Do you have any proof? Yes, I do. Give me proof. On one instance, I believe black people can practice racism against each other mm -hmm. because of the hatred that's been imbued into their psyche. In another instance, I don't believe our people can practice racism because there's a racism that is institutionalized racism when you have the power to control media, mm -hmm. education, and even enforce in policies and in which case we would never be able to practice racism, at least not at this particular level, in the capacity that others are able to practice it because they're in more influential positions of power. Define racism for me. Racism is the bigotry. It is the enforcement of degrading people based on who and what they are, uh, based on whatever reservations that you have, it is politically uh, is a form of animus that is charged against a species because of your intent to be supreme or reign over others. You know how deep down in our souls there's like something is missing 
in, like an emptiness and nothing seemed to fulfill it. Mm -hmm. Do you have that sometimes? Uh, I think we all have it at some point in our lives. How about you? Do you still have that sometimes? Uh, emptiness? Yeah. Yeah, I definitely feel an emptiness. And do you know where that comes from? Why you still have it? You have four beautiful wives, you have children, you have a business, you travel, you've written 90 books. Yes. Do you know why you still have that emptiness with all the glory you have? Why do you still have it? Because most of my people don't have a sense of their own potential and they've been hindered from the time since they've been born. So no matter how good I do, I would never truly feel successful until I see the bulk of our race. So you think that, that void is there because most black people are not doing well in life? Yes. And do you have it too at times? Yes. And why do you have it? That void? Because you're pretty, you have you're the boss of three other ladies and <laughs> Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I you're have being it. Worship. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, you got a beautiful daughter, by the way. Thank you. I, I saw appreciate a, a that. Beautiful daughter. Thank you. Why do you still have that void? I think um, the spiritual me is still like once more. It's it's here. Right. I'm still finding my purpose every day. Right. You know, and like polite mentioned, our people don't have what we have. Like, or I want more for our people, and I think my I will be at ease once we all, or or a majority of us are are successful. Why do you think you still have that void? That deep down just, it won't go away. Why do you still have it? When I was younger, I didn't feel beautiful. It's on so many different levels. We can say that media plays a role too, but it's also social. It's what your parents teach you, what defines beauty or being beautiful, right. you know? And it's more than just what's on the outside. It's how much do you feel your worth? Do you feel beautiful now? I do. And you yeah. still have the void though. Well, yes, because even though I am comfortable with myself, a lot of females aren't. And they need to be empowered as well. Mm -hmm. oh. Can I tell you that that void is the longing of a father? Anyone, That's that as well. I still yeah. do have that too. Anyone that is not raised man or woman, no matter what the color is, that longing is for the longing of a father. It's not for a physical thing because a physical thing would never solve that. That's why it's still there. And so once you can return to your father, maybe forgive him if he wasn't there to hold any grudges against him, then that boy would go away because God would fulfill it with the love of a father, and then you can live your life. Do you have anger? I definitely do. You do, and how about you? Yeah. Yeah. Here's how to overcome that. You gotta forgive your parents. Forgive your father for not being there and forgive your mothers I know you went through a bad situation with your mother, but forgive them, those who have mothers, for imposing her will on you. So that when you forgive them, you will be forgiven, and the anger will disappear, and then you have, you'll be made whole and have perfect peace. I know when you say that, you're speaking from personal experience, yes. correct? It doesn't matter the age or the color or the wealth or po poverty or whatever. Those who have forgiven, they are made whole. Those who have not, they still have that void. And then you won't have that anger to pass on to your children. You get along better with other people. You see that it's not about the color, but it's about the spirit. And everybody has the same problems. It's a spiritual thing. But you gotta get rid of the anger so that you can see that. That makes sense? I'm walking with you. Yeah. So my final question, Donald Trump, are you as happy as I am? Do you guys celebrate with me? <laughs> I don't. I'm 50-50 I'm on it. I, on my most facetious state of mind, I celebrate with you. Right on. I like oh. him almost more than probably every That's other true. president yeah. because of his honesty. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I could trust you, you more if you're honest. Yeah. He's very honesty. honest. Mm -hmm. You know where he's coming right. from. You, now that's yes, a real man. You know exactly what he yeah. appreciates. Right. Yeah. 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 Final question. Did you have fun? I enjoyed oh, yeah. myself. Yeah. I really appreciate you your listening. Thank you for having us. Good. You too? Yes. You had fun? <laughs> yeah. Thank you guys for coming. That was so much fun. Yeah, I definitely <laughs> enjoyed it. All right. Yeah, that's dope. This is the rap season, where the East starts pleasing. Girls around the world, no need to be squeezing. When I roll, I show cool. Always pack a tooth just in case. My brother acts a fool. I got the energy to put the girls in the frenzy. Put in shock when I rock. Give enough. I'm not stingy. Make sure I don't bore when I'm on the dance floor. Keep busy, boy. Like you never saw before. One flow. Good to go. After the show, I'll put your whole boy. Next time.
on the fallen state. Here's how you become a man. All right. You recognize that you're not a man. And when you recognize that, you go and forgive. And at that very moment, your nature starts to change. What you're doing is overcoming the spirit of your mother and taking on the spirit of your father. Because as you're seeing your weaknesses and don't have an opinion about it, it's bad or good, they don't hate it, it's naturally changed. Isn't that amazing? Thanks for watching The Fallen State. We need your continued support. Donate to my nonprofit here. Subscribe and like the videos here. And tell everybody and their mama about the show.